Hey, we're back. It was trying to reconnect. Look who I have here. Do you see a family, resem a family resemblance at all? Because uh, genetic, at least 50%. Uh, this is Janet Reese, mom of Grit Jim, uh, boss bitch, uh, <laughs> uh, super strong for not just for the age category, but um, if you look at Mark Ripito's chart, like she's in the elite category for deadlifting. Um, I'm not sure where you'd be in bitch press, but um, she said that she wanted to pull 260 pounds off the ground before she turned 60 years old. And stick around because we're going to get into that here in a little bit. But first, can you tell them a little bit? Can you kind of introduce yourself just a little bit? And uh, give them a little background. Tell them when I started this and everything. This is my mom. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, just tell them a little bit about you, where you're, maybe where you're from, okay. um, whatever you want, your love of coffee and I'm mom of, um, addiction at uh, working your ass off. Oh, sort of. <laughs> I, uh, I'm mom. I have four kids. Um, two of them are. Um, very into the weightlifting, and two of them are not. And just the exercise in general. Yeah, yeah, just exercise in general. They always think that they probably should, and they did at one time in their life. They exercise. They just don't do you it anymore. You mean the other two? Yeah, the other yeah. two. Um, I'm a nurse. I work in oral surgery, and I started doing this when I was 50. Doing what? Lifting. Lifting weights. Lifting, lifting weights when I was 50. Before that, I ran and I rode a lot of bikes. What year was that? What year did you start? 2007? Um, 10 years ago. Yeah. 10 years it's 2017, ago. 2017, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, 2007. <laughs> so, I started lifting when I turned 50 because I thought I was going to lay down and die at 50. And what do you mean? So, I needed something else. I what needed you you some need? encouragement. I needed, at 50, I just thought, Oh my God, I am a half a century old and oh. I've got to start to do something. You mean like life was over at 50? Life like, was, Oh my yeah. gosh, I'm on the downhill side. That's a, that's a bad feeling. Yeah. And I turned 60 yesterday and I don't feel like that this time. I don't feel, I don't, so do you 60 feel, didn't bother me this time. 50 really bothered me and that's when I knew I needed to do something different. Did you, so do you feel younger at Wow, younger at do you feel younger at fifty than you do at sixty? Well, no, yeah, no kidding. I don't. Um, feel, do you feel younger at sixty than you do at, did at fifty? I feel not maybe younger, but I am in so much better shape than I was when I was fifty. That it's not even funny. Really, like running up a flight of stairs, throwing grandkids around, uh, like what? I could still I can do the cardio part. Um, but I'm in so much better shape strength wise than I was when I was 50. I had never done that before. I always had an interest in it. The boys did it in football and I always had an interest in So she's talking about my brother weightlifting. and weightlifting. Yeah. Joe and I Joe and I, my brother and I we we started lifting weights. She had an interest in it. We didn't she kept she would ask us questions about it all the time, like, hey, can you show me this? Hey, can you show me this? And we were like we don't really know enough to tell you. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, and they were busy. And we're, you guys yeah, were busy. That's, that's so, a point too. Everybody was busy. <laughs> and, and we had a set in our basement. And I'd always look at that and think, kind of wish that I knew a little bit more about that. Yeah. And in those 10 years, um, between my 50 and 60, I think it's become so much more important for people my age and older every age to to be doing strength training right. rather than just cardio like what do you think like uh you mean from the experience of what it allows you to do in your life from uh, anti-aging benefits uh do you mean from like the metabolic the muscles that you get like what like i think especially the um the anti-aging and and just keeping yourself fit if you look um in the nursing homes they do weight training i mean they do exercises with with weights and they may not be big weights, but they didn't used to do that. 
They didn't used to I'm, do that years ago. Well, they had, there was a few years ago that somebody did a study and they took a, they took a nursing home and every day they would make, I think all they did was a farmer's carry. So they just had them carry two kettlebells uh -huh. uh, and they weren't heavy kettlebells. They just had them carry them for like 50 yards once a day. And they had to shut the, it was a 12 week study and they had to shut it down at like week four or five or six, something somewhere in the middle. And it was because uh, the nursing home said, you can't do this anymore. The, the, our patients, clients, whatever, I don't know what they're called. But anyway, the, the, the old people, for lack of a better word, uh, they were getting too rowdy. They were like up and moving around. They, and they're like, we don't have enough staff to cover all this, uh, all these people. So, uh, but at 60, you're a long ways off from going to a nursing home. I mean, you still got like, like four or five years, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I certainly hope that there's some kettlebells at the nursing home that I go to someday. Yeah, maybe there so. will be. Uh, like, I think like if, they, if you push a sled and you do a farmer's carry every day, you're doing yourself a world, a world of good. So what was it like your first, when you first started string conditioning, what was it like? Well, to begin with, I had never gone to a class. And so I was paranoid of going like to a gym and... What were you scared of? I know I'm uh, hijacking your story, but like... You know, you, you well, there were going to be people there and they were going to be watching me and they were... I wasn't going to be as good as them and... Was any I, of that... I've uh, never... No. Like looking back now, are you like, God, that no, was silly? No, it or was like... so silly because people don't pay attention to you and... <laughs> and you was, hope the instructors do, but It yeah. was so silly. No, I mean the other people that are working out. They don't pay attention to yeah. you. They're, work, they're doing their workout. And, and even if they do pay attention to you, they say encouraging things. And I was really, really nervous to start doing it. And I remember very well getting through the first class. And I remember what weights I, uh, the, you know, I was, I was swinging an eight and- An eight kilogram would yeah. be 17.6, yeah, 17.6 pounds. Yeah, so, so I it's, was- it's not a lot of weight. That's, that's a really no, small kettlebell. I was swinging an eight. I was doing things without weights. And I got done and I just felt so good. And I thought, I, I think I'm gonna go home and go on a long walk too. And I didn't do it. I, di I didn't do it. And then and what happened? Then I went to bed and I woke up the next morning and I couldn't get my legs out of bed <laughs> um, to sit down on the toilet. I wasn't was the instructor at this horrible. by the way. I was not the instructor. This was not me. I was actually living in Minneapolis Well, I just time. think about how small a weight I was doing. Yeah. And and uh, how bad I hurt from that. Yeah. And I will never forget that as long as I live. Yeah. That's the reason and that you never stop lifting because you hurt so bad <laughs> that first time. And then, But this is a really good thing. This, this is one thing, that story, some people will hear that story and be like, I'm never gonna start lifting because I don't wanna be oh, so sore. No. I don't wanna go through that. And the interesting thing, this is a mindset thing. She didn't go, I'm so sore, I can't do that again. She said, I'm so sore, I can't believe my body cannot put That's up with exactly that, right. that I have to continue to do this. Yeah. I can't let it beat me. And I think that there's a huge distinction there between people just in general. I've seen, I've trained a lot, I've trained a lot of people at this point. A lot of people, a little, that little bit, just that little obstacle, they drop off. Plow through it. You know what I really figured out in that though? I remember that first time that I did it, I didn't do it again for another week. Because I thought, I'm not going back there until I start feeling better. And you probably did need to do that because you probably did yourself some what I, Yeah, what yeah. I figured out was is if you turned around and went back and did it again, it actually helped me. Mm -hmm. And so I st then I started doing, what, three times a week or something I don't know. like it, that. I, it, you were a year then, down um, doing street training um, before I moved back and before you started training with me. Um, so. Yeah. So I don't know the, the, uh, the ins and outs of the details, but I do remember showing up when I first, that first time that I came back and I showed up to one of your classes and there was, uh, the instructor wasn't there. There was three interns that he had there. They sit over in the corner and they talked with each other the whole time with their backs to everybody in the group. And there were 16 people in the group and they would go through the exercises. You guys would do them. You'd all screw them up. And I went around and started correcting people. And I said, do not ever go to those people ever again. That is garbage. Well, the other thing, we didn't stretch very much. You're, you're, you had a routine of stretches before and after that just made so much more sense. Well, you just need to do something yeah. to get yourself going and uh, like cracking your neck a couple of times isn't, is that's, not getting yourself going. Yeah, that's kind of, that was kind of what we did. But anyway, so you but. pushed through the obstacle, you're super sore, you went back to your next class, found out that you got some of that soreness worked out of you, but it was probably good that you did 
have that time because you probably did yourself some damage that first go. I don't. Because I know you and you're just a go, 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 go. Um, because I'm the same way. It's the temperament, right? Uh, so then you go back and you do it again and you do it again and you do it again. What was the middle like? Of all, like, what are you learning along the way of strength and conditioning? What's it? What like? No, I don't even think you realize that you're there. What do you, you mean? No, I, I don't think of myself really as strong. You know, I know I'm way better than what I was when I first started. But you slowly get there. You just yeah. keep going, keep going, keep going, and pretty soon. You're lifting more than you realize that. Yeah, you're lifting you've more than your there. body weight. Yeah, because yeah. like right now, if we took a poll of all the people on here, how many people would like of the people that are on the show right now, how many of you think that Janet is strong? Because most of you have <laughs> most of you have worked out with her. Uh, now, like like you walk into a. This is what you don't, you might not know this, but this is what people say when she walks in the door. Like, oh my God, she's here. Like, uh, oh, I hope not. In a way that's like it's like. I got to step up my game in an inspiring way, not in a, oh my God, she's here. Oh my God, she's so mean. No, that's not it at all. It's like, oh my God, she's here. I got to step up my game. You always step up your game. Anytime you walk in, you step up your game. Maybe that's why that's they step up. That's how you get better. That's how you get better. So, so you started out with how much weight? Eight kilograms on a kettlebell swing, eight yeah. kilograms on a deadlift. And uh, when, how long before you did your uh, deadlifted your body weight? Gosh, I don't know. I really don't. It just slowly happened. I was trying to think about this this week, and and it just slowly happened. It just you know, like it just gets one pound, five a pounds better. at a time. Or did you? Because some people they'll go bam, 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 and some people just. I think it helped. I think you probably kept a, kept me anchored just a little bit. No, you can't go that much heavier because I probably would have been stupid enough to. Try well, something. yeah, because you got to earn the right to be able to move a certain amount of weight. And Janet here just wants to max out every day. Well, she's hardcore. I, I, I just think I'm determined. See I don't what, know that see I'm what Aaron Shaw says. Yeah, it, it says it's as strong as an understatement. She's an inspiration. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you learn along the way? Because, for me, strength training has always been like my best friend. It's, it's just like, it'll always kick you the real deal. You don't show up, it, it's, it, it'll kick you the real deal, you know? So um, there's so much to learn from, you almost get into a meditative state when you're, when you're strength training, uh, for me anyway. Has it been like that for you, and what have you learned along the way? I don't know if it's um, while I'm doing the training, but if I don't do it, I'm down on myself. You know, I'm, if I miss a day, if I um, like you're kicking yourself like you yeah, feel shame like, or guilt or like dang I didn't get in there it makes me feel so much better when I'm done I got you you know sometimes you really don't want to be here you're kind of tired and, and you got up early and you really you, you don't want to really be here but when you're done you just feel so good so it just feels so good so we, like so if you don't want to be here what do you do you mean if I can't be like, here? You're like, you're, you're like, gosh, I don't want to go work out. What do you do? I still have things at home I can do if I have You still to. work out, right? Yeah. You do it anyway, right? Yeah. If, you, if, you, if, you're, if you're feeling sore and tired, what do you do? You still get it in, right? <laughs> I, 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 I don't always get it in, though. You know. Well, I nobody's might. perfect. Yeah. Like, uh, no, one, no one's expecting you to be like, uh, oh, Janet, she works out seven days a week. Every, but every but if I can't be here, yeah. I do try to do something at home. I have, um, I don't have what you have here, but well, I do have not. a nice, so I, I can easily work out at home. Mm -hmm. It's so much more fun to come in here and do it um, with, with a class. And the other thing is you would think after 10 years that you could sort of know what you're doing and you shouldn't um you just never realize think, that you're moving wrong and to have somebody else watch you yeah. and anybody that's in the classes with me knows that uh they constantly tell me i'm doing things wrong <laughs> i go too fast i i uh shannon's like a chainsaw had a baby with a wrecking ball <laughs> that um, was given uh, like a NASCAR engine and it just is on full throttle all the time. Adam is a lot like me. <laughs> <laughs>
There's nothing wrong with that though. It's just like uh, some people you have to kind of hey get moving, and uh, some people you have to like hey put that lasso on them. And say you need to slow down. You need to think about how you're moving and doing things right. But like I feel that like, you say you've been doing this for ten years and you feel like you should know everything by now. I've been doing this for twenty years and I still don't think like I, like two thousand seven was when I started or uh, nineteen ninety seven was when I started lifting. But you still don't. What I'm saying is I I still do things that. Uh, I've done a lot of yeah. and I don't have my butt far enough back or I don't or I'm yeah, moving yeah. where I shouldn't be moving or yep. you know there's there's always something that you you need somebody watching you I yeah. need somebody watching yeah. you you can't see the picture when you're inside the frame it's uh, it's uh, you're too close to the project I think you're doing it right but uh, yeah me. I before I started, I had a bad back, I had a herniated disc, and they made me quit running, and they made me start walking. And then you started biking, And right? I And I was big into biking. I really liked biking. I and remember. And still do. So I still I, like biking. We were on our bikes one time, and I lift off to you, and uh, <laughs> you said, what did you say? I think you said... I don't remember if you said ass or not, but I think you said I'll ride your ass into the ground, or I'll ride you, I'll ride you into the ground, or something like that. Like you just came back, like, and I was like, Tr like, try it. <laughs> I really enjoyed riding bikes, but that they gave me some uh, injections in my back, and it got me to the point that I could start doing some exercises. And I think that's when I got really interested in, in the weights. In the strength training game? In the strength training. So that's interesting because you got more injuries from jogging and from biking than you did. And I don't, Oh, yeah. Way um, more. And you had, you, you had a knee injury here like three years ago. Uh, but that's a meniscus tear. I mean, that, the meniscus tear was probably because you were on your feet for 35 years as a nurse, not because you were lifting hard. I don't, I don't sit a lot. No. And I think it's just been hard on my knees. Yeah, the meniscus is just the pad, and after a while, that pad just starts to wear out. So yeah. um, I would imagine a lot of nurses have that. But. And that is still true. You know, that's what I notice about being 60 is you do have a few more aches yeah. that you didn't always have. And there was a huge mindset thing that you had to get over at that time, too, because that right before you tore your meniscus, you pulled 255, 255 pounds off of the ground for, I think it was five reps, wasn't it? Okay, so 255 pounds off of the ground for five reps. Somebody do the math for me. Take 255 divided by 85%. That'll give you her calculated max. Now, what... Um, after that, I remember you saying, I don't know if I, oh wait, then you got back up to 255 pounds. You lifted it long, for two reps a couple time, years yeah. ago, or a couple years later, and you said, I didn't know that I could get back up to this after my knee. Yeah. And now she said that she's going for 260 before she was 60 years old. Yesterday was her 60th birthday. And I don't know, do you want to tell them now? This is probably a good time to do it. Did you make it? When did you make it? I or did it. you make it? This Summer or fall sometime. Yeah, it was like three months ago, and you did it for like four yeah. reps. Yeah, and then... Um, so 260 times four is about 80% of your one rep max. Or, uh, sorry, like 87, 88% of your one rep max. So someone can do that math, too. That that was hard, though, and uh, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I did do it. But you did and, do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's uh, max weights... You have to earn the right to be able to be there, obviously, but at the same time, uh, when we start getting up into those, like when it comes, it becomes a competition or whatever, you know, at some point you just gotta grip it and rip it and pull it off, but you need the proficiency up front to be able to. That makes me nervous. She it's, worked on this for years before she was proficient enough to do this, to try this, and then she went ahead and did it. What makes you nervous? It's competitive with Janet. Yes. I'm only competitive with Janet. Um, but if you know either of us, you know that no one, it, like no one, is more competitive with herself. I, I don't think I've never met anybody as competitive as I am with me, and I think it's the same with you. Like there, it's like you're, it's like you're, it's like you're working against a ghost. And it, it's is it like that for you? That That's it, how I always. That again, it's it's determination. You know, it's the I'm it's determined. That relentless. I'm gonna I'm gonna get there. Yeah. After my knee, I really thought it's grit. I I think I'm just gonna. I think I'm just going to settle down here and not try to um, And that's get, what you needed to do at the time. 
Well, that could be. I never thought I'd make it back to that 255. I remember the day I made it back to that 255. I was just like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, I love that. And uh, I never thought I'd do that with that knee, but um, made it. Yeah, 260 pounds by the time uh, before you're two, before you're 60 years old on a deadlift. That's pretty darn good. Yeah, I'm I'm happy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm happy. With that was that was like like she had to choke. Like that was pretty hard to get out, wasn't it? <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's talk about uh, mom stuff here for a little bit because I think a lot of moms need to hear. Uh, the very simple rules that you laid down to get, because you had two kids, you had four kids total, the, and they're spread out over a number of years, right? So you had a long time to kind of analyze, look at, like how are you gonna parent these kids different from the first two than the second two, because you're gonna learn as you go along, right? Um, first two, very picky eaters. Second two, basically will try anything. Why? The, f the first two, number one, I was younger. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, you were really young. I was really, really young, young. <laughs> and and, like and the kid. last two, I I think I don't know. By the time the as far as why are those two older ones picky? I th they're not, and they're not extremely picky. I mean, we always have tried sure. to eat pretty nutritious. I have to admit that that's the other thing that I've learned out of this is is how to really eat good nutrition. My idea of dieting years ago was just to stop eating and, and uh, you know, maybe have an apple for lunch. And you can't do that. And, and really, I've known that, but Adam stressed it. And, and he's made me a much better eater than not, I even was Not years eating ago. just isn't a, a very good option. And that you have to eat. You know, that you, you have to fuel your system. To, to be able to do this stuff. But as far as the picky eaters go, I think part of it is because the two younger ones were with us a lot. They, they learned to eat sushi. Mm -hmm. They learned, you know, where the two older ones, we wouldn't have gone out for sushi. Well, but, well that's the thing, but, like uh, uh, Maggie doesn't know this and Molly and Joe don't know. Um, well, my, I got a really good perspective because I was around for how, more like how Molly and Joe were. We didn't really do a, a like, um, were, I don't know how to explain it. Like, uh, there wasn't as much time to go do things. There wasn't as much as money to go it's do true. things. Uh, there wasn't as much just uh, exactly. resources to go do things. Where with Maggie and I, there was a lot more resources to yep. go do things. There was a lot more money. There was a lot more time. Um, so we got exposed to a little bit more things. Do you think that it's just exposed? Like, so Maggie doesn't get the other one. I got both. So it's kind of interesting. Do, do you think it's just exposure to different things? I'm not or sure. Do you I'm think not sure, but I will say that the difference between Adam's refrigerator and his older brother's refrigerator <laughs> is amazing. <laughs> it's not a competition between Joe and I, though. Like, no, uh, but it's totally different. I mean, just totally different. Yeah, it's not like we haven't lived together since while well, he was at home. Yeah. And but but you no. did have some food rules. What like uh, for instance, uh, what would happen? Because this is one of my like the the favorite little kid things that I did. Um, when, what would happen when somebody said yuck? Oh, if they fix the next meal. Yeah, why? <laughs> because you don't, you don't say yuck. You don't say yuck to I the person who the meal. I just spent time making that meal and somebody, and it happened. <laughs> and they said yuck and they fixed the next meal. Yeah. So, and so, they, were, they were little. I remember this really well, Joe saying yuck and being in the, and I was probably three or four years old. I had to be four, there's no way a three year old. I don't remember how it was, but I remember him being in the kitchen and being like, oh, <laughs> I think and crying dead. and then you stayed strong you were like no nah, figure it out kid and I don't care if we have Wheaties dad, uh, dad busted and he went out and helped him make something and I remember we had a meal not that long later and I was like I hate this meal <laughs> and so I was like found a term I wanted to make the next meal and I thought wait this is so I remember being like yuck I don't like this <laughs> And, uh, and she goes, you're making the next one then. And I remember because I made cold meat sandwiches. I was like really into cold meat sandwiches at the time. So I knew how to make cold meat sandwiches. So I went for that. But, yeah. So you had the yuck rule. They had to make the next meal. Um, what about, uh, what if, uh, there was, because these are just super simple meals. And there's three of them. What was the, the other one that the three bites? We, we, you had to try it. You always had to try it. Didn't have to eat the whole portion, but you had to, you had to take three bites. Of everything on the table, right? Of everything on the table, you had to try it. 
And if you didn't like it that time, you might like it the next time. So you had to try it at least three times before you figured out that you really didn't like it. Yes. And, and we ate out of a garden. I mean, we had yeah, a big garden. We, did. we ate out of a garden. Their garden is probably the footprint of Grit Gym. Like uh, when I was a kid. Uh, and we were Very all responsible younger. for going out and, and tending to the garden. Just kind of interesting looking back. I also that's think, not a thing anymore. You need to sit down at a table. There needs to be no television going. There needs to be no cell phones on the table or in the room. And we didn't have that then. But, um, it's, but it's a thing now. But it does need to be, we really did try, even though we were running off to a basketball game or a wrestling meet or something most all the time. We did try to sit down to a table. Yeah. I think that makes a huge difference. And what about the parents that are gonna say, uh, my kid, my kids would never do that. My kids wouldn't. My kids wouldn't eat that. If I put something on the table, they don't want to eat it. You don't get anything else. No, you don't. I, I wouldn't give in and let them have something she, else. She's not a budger. She's not going to budge on that. Um, thoughts on being hungry? Is is hunger like an awful thing, or is hunger like? No, we'll they'll it? when they get hungry, they'll eat. Yeah. They'll eat. Yeah, and uh, I always thought the grandma's thing was, uh, Grandma Hoodie's thing was, uh, you'll, they'll, you'll spoil their dinner. Yeah, yeah. I always thought her thing was kind of interesting too. But um, So those are the three rules. If you said yuck, you cooked the next meal, you had to try everything on the table for at least three bites, and you had to try it at least three times at some point um, down the road, right? Yep. And then hunger isn't necessarily a bad thing, and too bad if your kid's not going to eat it. If they're hungry enough, they'll probably consume it, right? So, and then you have a super, super, super simple way that you have always used to make sure that you uh, don't fluctuate in weight a lot. Um, and it's just the pant sizes. It's my pants. Can you tell sizes. them about that? It's not a, it's the way my pants fit. My pants start getting tight, then I know that I've got to uh, do something about this. Yeah. So. And so what happens if, uh, would you ever go and buy a bigger size pant? No. Why? Because if you buy a bigger size pant, you're going to get used to that size, and then pretty soon you're going to get a bigger size, and pretty soon you're going to get a bigger size, and I've seen that happen. Yeah, and that's how you end up being like, oh, well, I have to wear something to work. You justify it somehow, right? Yeah. And it's just, um, when you look at certain people, and you think about that now, and go backwards with this, and you look at it, and like, you see somebody that's gained 100 pounds in the last five years, you think, like, every time that they gained a certain amount of weight, they had to go and buy new clothes. Yeah. They had to make the conscious decision to go and relinquish that space, right? Yeah. They had to go to the fat pants. But yeah, just one simple thing. I've, I, I've heard you say that I don't know how many times in my life. But if you, it's it, not so much weight. It's more how your clothes fit. It's how your clothes fit. Yeah. It's not the, it's not the scale, right? And then what about – oh, we said we were going to talk about the ADD thing, but we didn't even do it, did we? That's okay. Because um, we just got a few minutes left. Wait. John says – what if I wear elastic waist? <laughs> John, this is John Hazlett. Where? What if I wear elastic waist pants? John, if you're wearing leggings, kudos. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. No, I think there's a thing, but but uh, like uh, that's that's like a new that's like a new way that everything's stretchy, but it, that's funny. Um, but what about the ADD? Because. So um, I just put up a video. I haven't shown you the video. You, uh, Janet isn't on social media, so she doesn't see most of this stuff. Um, she has email, and that's that's the end of it. But what? Uh, so I don't know if this person is just turning around or if they're coming in, but I think they're just, just turning turn around. around. So what about the ADD thing? Like, uh, like no one else in the family has ADD. If you were to, if we could, if you were to be born in my place and I was to be born in your place, I probably wouldn't have been. Uh, diagnosed with ADD and dyslexia and all this stuff, and you probably would have been. Uh, you got along just fine. I got along just fine. Uh, this was right when they were first coming out. They made it look like it was just going to be like, you're a dumb, you, you're a stupid kid. You're never going to amount to anything. You're probably going to be stocking shelves at midnight, which no problem with people stocking shelves at midnight. They just painted a picture that, <laughs> that you didn't have much choice. And I like, and the video is about um, that first, I remember that first day that we came back from it was Dr. Hartson's office, and he was very nice about it, super awesome guy, really glad that it was him um, that I got to uh, go a through a lot guy. of that stuff. But at the same time, I remember getting home, it was just like silence all the way home, like you and dad were trying to, um, trying to like negotiate this in your mind, like what are we gonna do? I mean, I don't, like, like, what, like he can't, uh, and the teachers have laid down this terrible thing, like, uh, like he can't learn, he's, anyway. And I remember you got home and you said, you are gonna have to work 
10 times as hard as everybody else. And I remember thinking, I didn't say this out loud, but I was like, you know what, I'm gonna learn 10 times as much as everybody else too. Like, why? Like, uh, like why is that the mindset? Like, why, uh, like, what? There's the what determination. For? I mean, you have to have determination. And that's where you were determined. I think, I, you know, I was never diagnosed because <laughs> they didn't ever do they didn't that. Do, it wasn't a thing. It wasn't made up yet. But it's school, a totally made up thing. School wasn't it, easy for me. Yeah. You know, I had to work like crazy to, uh, to get where I did. And, and to this day, I, you know, I don't know that I'd want to go back to school, but, uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, it's determination. It's, and that, that's what you did. I mean, you were determined that they, you were going to beat it and you did. Well, you I, did. I didn't even you know, know if, if somebody... everybody could just look at a crystal ball and know that it's all going to be okay. You know, I, I think that you're so bottled up with what those, what they tell you right there that, um, if you could just look in a crystal ball and know it's, it's going to be all right. And for the most part, it's always all right. Yeah. I'm kind of glad that they didn't. I'm kind of glad I didn't get to see where, I'm not kind of, I'm totally glad because I think it drove me to be even more because, uh, like school is really hard for me, but I still, I was 4.0 and all the way through. Yeah. I remember the, 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 the only person that gave me a B in high school, she was in here the other day. She was at the Burn the Bird. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like, a, it's like a badge of honor I give her. But you're the only person that gave me a B. Actually, there was an elementary teacher that I saw this week that, um, I'm not going to say her name, but um, she had so much trouble having you read. And I told her, oh gosh, if you could see him now, he just reads Voracious constantly. Reader. And, yeah. yeah. If it was Mrs. Lauer, you should say her name because I just think she was was an, she, she's an amazing person. She, uh, she never gave up on me. She never let me be a victim. She That's never, exactly like, right. she challenged me. Um, and she, anyway, she goes, I told her how great she was. Oh God. Yeah. She's fantastic. I remember going up to her when I was a senior in high school and I said, uh, I was like, I know I've changed a lot. So you probably don't remember me. My name's Adam Reese, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> she remembers uh, <laughs> like I remember getting, uh, because this is back when they gave out, I don't think they give grades in elementary school anymore, but I, that was my first A and before that I, <laughs> A was not on the menu. Um, but hard. yeah, spelling, um, was something that she said you can control. Yeah. You can control how much you can memorize these words if you work hard enough at it. And I was like, okay, well, I'll do that. And then uh, we started getting to work on it. Like, uh, like with the world being where it is right now, where victims are now the heroes, and it's uh, and it's kind of a sad place. I, I don't know where I'm going with that question, <laughs> but the, like some more stories like that probably should, like uh, could use to be. Put out because I don't think I was a victim of, uh, of that stuff and I don't think you thought that really? you were you were the victim parent like how could I have this kid I think it's hard as a parent I think it I think it's really hard as a parent to think that anybody's gonna think that your kid can't do something you know of course they can do it yeah you know, we just have to work a little harder yeah. at it yes so, yep yeah. and uh, like you're really big on that self-responsibility stuff too so I think that that really that plays into it also yeah Mm. Are we going to talk about young moms? Yeah. What do you have to say? To, uh, yeah. What, what do I we, have to say to young moms? What do we have to say to young moms? I had all these questions on here and it blocked me out. So now I've just completely gone off script. I just really wish that I had started this when I was younger. And I started what? Started lifting. Started lifting when you were and, younger? Or going to a gym or taking some time for myself other than getting up early in the morning before everybody else gets up and taking a run or um, riding a bike or whatever. And you then, mean not doing that, doing then, something else instead? Yeah. Like going and lifting instead of that? I wish I had, I wish yeah. I had, wish I had taken some time to go to a class or, or do something for myself. I think moms need to get out. They yeah. are so busy running everybody everywhere. And I know it's very hard. I don't know if I could have done it or not because we were going in so many different directions. You had four kids from like you had one go to but, kindergarten and one go to college the same year. Yeah, like that's insane. Uh, and two in the middle. We were we were always running, but uh, I really, if you can get away and and go to a, you know, just like Erin, she comes in here. She's got two little kids mm -hmm. that that um, you know, I'm sure she gives up something there to come, but she. Moms, and it's got to be so good for her. I it's, wish I'd done like, it. I wish I'd done it as I was young. It's so powerful for her as a young mom to go yeah. and do that thing. Like it, I would imagine that it makes her a better mom to be able yes. to, like going yes. away for an hour makes her come back and be able to be a better mom because she's yes. in better shape because she did something for herself. And I think a lot of moms are stuck by the whole that's that's selfish. I can't do that. I want to see my kids. 
but like, and they're like, I'm so selfless. And it's like, well, there's a balance here. If like, it's possible, I just, I really. And is it always possible? No. When's, not, it, when's it not possible? Sometimes you just get too darn you mean like, to be able to do it, but you need to as a make whole, though, the time. Like oh, if you can go possible, once or twice in, a, in a given week, is it impossible to hit at least one workout? No, because, yeah. well, for one thing, we didn't used to have those 5.30 in the morning classes. I'd get up at 5.30 in the morning and take the class now. Like a true psycho. Yeah, but, um, and then go to work. No, but you can fit it in somewhere. It just, yeah. uh, you might lose a little sleep, you know, Instead of staying in bed, get up and go work out. It just yeah. makes you feel so much better. What about the grandmas listening? The young grandmas? Because you're the young grandma now. You're not the young mom. So now you're the young grandma. Looking back, anything that you would have changed about how you did the mom thing? or? Oh, I have so much more patience with my grandkids <laughs> well, than I had with my kids. I was that. not very patient. I wasn't very patient. And I think that, too, if I could have... Because I remember if I didn't get up, get up and have my run... I wasn't very nice. <laughs> I was angry. And, and uh, I, I just think it, it's just so important that you get out. Yeah. That you get out. And you throw and, a medicine ball at the wall and blow and, that steam off the top. And as a grandma, it is never too late to start. I, it is never, ever too late to start. Yeah. You started at 50. Do you think people, if, if we're going back 10 years, do you think people that are 60 and 65, do you think it's too, oh, like, do you think they no. should get in here right now? No, I, my sister just retired from teaching. She's 60. Oh, Rita retired? Yeah. She Good for retired, her. and I nice. told her, you need to go to a gym. You need to go get a trainer. You need right to start now. doing some weight. Right now. Right Yeah. I did. You think she's going to do it? I don't know. <laughs> she might. I hope she does. I hope she I hope does. she does, too. All right. Um, and what do they do if they don't feel motivated to do it? Gosh, that's a tough question. You well, just have you, to feel motivated to do it. You just have to. Well, if you don't feel motivated, do you just do it anyway? Yeah, but there's a lot of people that if they're right. not motivated, they're, they're not going to go do it. You have to have a little motivation to go. See, I think, but, like, I just take the word motivation out of it. Just, like... Just take motivation, the word motivation but, out of it, and just be like, just do it. But like, like I said, sometimes I don't like feel like coming in here. Right, that's what I mean. I mean like, I'm tired. When you're tired, you're sore, you don't yeah. feel like going. You, you just you're feel just so like, much better when and, you're done. And even though you're not motivated, you still do it. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't. Know, I didn't know exactly what you were talking about. I know. I'm. I'm not always the best at asking questions. But uh, Aaron Shaw says I'm jumping up and down because I agree so <laughs> much Good. with an exclamation point and. Uh, Kara Blodgett said hi, and I think somebody else said hi, and Andre Gill is watching, which is awesome, because uh, laying down knowledge bombs. And then, when you're in here, you make it seem like you couldn't be torn from exercise. Uh, what do people need to know about getting started? Walk in the door. Yeah, it's so simple, right? Just gotta walk in just the gotta, door. Just gotta take that first step. Just yeah. take that first step. Go with somebody. See if you can get somebody to go with you. Yeah, you know? and actually for New Year's, we're doing a New Year's challenge where every group needs at least one non-member. So oh. if you... Uh... Oh, that's kind of fun. <laughs> see, you can see that. I can't see that. <laughs> oh, I'm just giggling. <laughs> oh, man. Um... It, I think that walking in the door, boy, that first time I went, uh, Maggie went with me, and you weren't there. And I thought I was going to puke on the way there. I was scared to death. And it was just so great. Once I did it, it was so great. It is walking in the door. Yeah, she's getting that first step yeah, out. Yeah, it is. Yeah, definitely. All right, anything else you want to leave people with? Knowledge bomb, words of wisdom, simplification of complex ideas, world uh, <laughs> solution for world peace? I don't think so. <laughs> Push, pull, or get out of the way. I think that, that is, uh, that's, that's good enough right there. But I think you're right on the head. Like, uh, that determination, that relentless, that, like, that's what grit is really about. It's, uh, like it, it took me forever to come up with the name for what we were going to call this thing. I was like, what's it take to actually be successful at this stuff? What's it take to be successful in life? What does it take to be happy? Man, you got to get that character. you got to get that grit. you got to have some courage. you got to have some determination. you got to be relentless. you got to take responsibility. It's like, how do you sum up that whole word? Well, you gotta have some, you got to have some grit in you. Yeah. It just makes you feel so good. And then it, really it makes you feel so good. Yeah. All right. Ready to end this thing? Yeah.
how do we do that? We just ask them to share it and <laughs> comments and like and and send it to everybody that they know. You can do that. I, I, <laughs> I am not techie. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, click the share button. Send this out to everybody that you know. Uh, Janet did pull good watch. Happy birthday, Janet. Now go have a beer. <laughs> John wrote that too. I had a glass of wine last night, John. Well, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> glass of wine for her birthday. All right. But yeah, Janet pulled 260 a few months ago before she turned 60. She wanted to pull, she wanted to pull 260 pounds off of the floor, which is pretty impressive. She did not start there. She has worked her way up over the course of 10 years to be able to pull 260, and she's had some setbacks in the middle. Uh, one big one for the most part, though. She just kept on hammering, kept on hammering, kept on going at it. But um, I thought this trainer. was a really good show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thanks for calling me a trainer and not a coach. That's funny. <laughs> All right. Thanks for being here, guys. Really appreciate it. Please slap the share button. Send this out to everybody. You know, we really appreciate it. Um, this was a fun one. I've been trying to get her on the show for a long time. <laughs> so thanks, guys. We'll see you soon.